Hi guys and welcome back to another Sims 4 build video. Today I'm going to be making an abandoned church as you could probably tell by the title. Um, I'm not sure what style a church is, I just kind of looked up churches on Google Images and found some that I liked. Yeah, actually building this lot in the Forgotten Hollow Town, you can tell by the address up in the corner which lot it is if you wanted to place it there. I don't tend to build here because it's a little bit creepy, <laughs> but that works with this type of build and like vampire builds in general. And we're actually using quite a bit of stuff from the vampire pack, like the doors and the fencing, but you'll see as we go along. I didn't do much with the inside of this building because like I said, I kind of wanted to use it as like a renovation project or you could put a little tent in there and camp out as a poor sim, <laughs> which would be fun. So the stone walls we're using on the outside are actually from the jungle adventure pack. And they're pretty cool because they've got like some moss and that growing on them so they look like they've been left uncared for for a while but like the weather's gotten to them so I think that's really cool for an abandoned type build. Um, for a lot of the stuff like the doors and windows I ended up using a lot of like I said the vampire pack stuff just because they look a little bit dilapidated and creepy. But another cool idea for this building it's up on the gallery if you want to I haven't used any CC so it's easy to download. So if you didn't want to renovate it into like a building, you could renovate it as a church and have it as like a wedding chapel, maybe even make it into like a Las Vegas wedding chapel or something fun. That would be really cool, I'd love to see what people do with it, I love seeing what people do with other people's builds, like how they change it. But my inspiration for this build was actually in the town that I live, we've got an abandoned church like right in the middle that's for sale. And for ages I just like wanted to buy it and just like renovate it and shovel my friends in there. It's so huge, it would be so cool. Like imagine having like giant stone walls and stained glass windows where you live. It's just, I feel like churches are just so pretty. <laughs> but it's like, it's a grade listed building I think because yeah, the church that I originally had it, they built like a church right next door to it. And then they started to try and destroy the church they were in. But it was a listed building so they weren't allowed and now they basically ruined it and it's been sat there for ages just deteriorating and it's such a shame because it's, like I said it's a really pretty building. But yeah I was having trouble here wondering what windows to use and where to put them and I think I settled on ones that just like kind of match the door in the end like I said from the vampire pack but uh, it would have been fun to use some more church type windows any church type ones that I did found they just kind of weren't the right shape or right length or height so it was a bit like there. so <laughs> we just ended up with these vampire -y ones to make it look a bit creepy and I think no, I didn't use those ones in the end I used some other stained glass type ones from the get together pack yeah so that on the inside at least we have some sort of stained glass action going on <laughs> Oh yeah, and uh, on the outside I'm just doing like a little graveyard and cemetery in a minute and it took me forever to find where the gravestones were. I don't know why it took me so long but I guess it's not something I usually reach for in my everyday gameplay. <laughs> if there is a gravestone it's normally from a dead sim, not for aesthetic reasons, <laughs> so yeah. At the moment just kind of finding some roof decorations, I thought maybe it could have some windows going up top but it didn't really work so I just went for like a spire in the end because churches always have a big spire going on. <laughs> I don't know why but they do. Um, yeah and carrying those pillars from the outside to the inside there's like a structural point and the same with the stone walling so that it's kind of inside and outside it's the same. Just found some like, user. I think these candelabras are from Jungle Adventure as well. So in game you can dim the lights as much as you like if you don't want them that bright. But it was just to help me see what I was doing and so you can guys can see what I was doing. It would have been cool if like in Get Famous we got some really giant stained glass windows. That would have been like the best pack I think for that to come in using it as like a prop. But you know, we didn't and I guess it's not something you'd use often. But for like converted builds or as like a key feature in period buildings, it would have been cool for the building aspect. So yeah, we're going to furnish the inside in a minute I think, but at the moment working on the outside and like I said the little graveyard section. I thought about um, <laughs> making real gravestones, but I thought that would be take a bit too long and going a bit too far and the amount of sims I would have to kill. Which, to be fair, isn't hard sometimes. <laughs> but no, I went for, and uh, oh yeah, these giant statues like the fairy and the woman in that from the vampire pack because sometimes you have some really ornate gravestones and they have the statues. I've got some pet gravestones in there too, just to mix it up a bit of everyone, a bit of everything. <laughs> 
I really love gravestones. I know it's weird and a bit morbid, but I think some of them are so pretty. Especially, I think, the more they've kind of aged and the longer they've been there and the more they start to fall apart, the more I like them. <laughs> but I'm the type of person, I think rust is aesthetically pretty. Like, I love the colours of rust. I love the... just... yeah. <laughs> I love things that are decaying. It's weird, I know. But yeah, just adding loads of vines all over as well, making it look like it's been in uncared for grounds, like there's no groundskeeper anymore. So yeah, a bit of fun. I think I also gave it the lock trait haunted because of the graveyard, so if you do have anyone in here for like a rags to riches that could keep them up at night being haunted by ghosts because they're in an abandoned church, I think that's pretty fun. And kind of creepy, but you can always get rid of that lock trait in lock trait. <laughs> lot trait in that little icon up the top, a little house with the eye. If you click it, you can change the lot traits for any lot, which is sometimes a nice way of like kind of cheating but not cheating so your sims get skills quicker and higher. But yeah, just adding some foliage to the grounds. Like I said, it's in the Forgotten Hollow world, so using a lot of the vampire pack trees so it blends in with the ones around it so that it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb from the background. Yeah, making a little bird bath, a little birdhouse area, it's kind of cute. And then I think, yeah, adding those dusty rugs that we got from Get Famous on the inside, those are really fun to use. I've used them, I think, two or three times now in a build, especially with like older ones. And yeah, there's no like religious paintings or anything, so I just put a tapestry at the back there. And then on the outside, I go to town with all the ivory and all the brambles to make it look really overgrown and kind of forgotten. Plus Ivy's like evil to old stone buildings, what's any building actually? I love Ivy and I love the look of Ivy, but you would not want it growing on your house because it properly messes it up. <laughs> so yeah, I think I also put the Ivy and the brambles and that on the inside to make it look like it has come through all the stonework and it is kind of slowly tearing it apart. Because Mother Nature will do that, she'll find a way, she'll get in anywhere she can. Which I think is kind of beautiful, <laughs> in a weird way. Yeah, one of my favourite like architectural or interior design combinations is having lots of like old stone walls, but like having lots of fresh new glass with them. Like the combination of stone and glass is one of my favourites. <laughs> like any design magazines, I'm always like, ah, oh, that's so pretty. So I know what kind of house I would have if I had enough money to build it. But yeah. <laughs> I won't have that anytime soon. Uh, yeah, on the inside, like I said, putting the ivy in there on the inside as well as the outside to make it look like it's grown through, which is kind of cool. And you could do for any building to make it look run down. And adding some of these broken ruins and stones around as well from, I think, again, the Jungle Adventure Pack. Oh, and an old pipe organ just to make it look really churchy. <laughs> Did anyone ever used to go to Sunday school? I used to go to Sunday school as a kid and we had a choir. And the lady who ran it was really creepy. I don't know why. Just as a kid, she she really scared me and gave me major creepy vibes. But she'd always teach us like how to paint and like art and stuff. So I guess she wasn't like a bad person. But she just, you know, when some people just have that vibe that they're a bit creepy. She 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 was a bit creepy. But I think we mainly went to choir because my sister could really sing, really really sing. I cannot, but she could. <laughs> she was really good. So I would kind of just mime the words and pretend I was singing. <laughs> and I think one time a girl who was standing next to me who was actually singing Bless Her, singing her little heart out, she got told off for miming when it was me. I think they thought that I was singing what she was singing and she was miming when I was miming. Uh, yeah, I felt kind of bad for that. <laughs> I didn't say anything because I was young and scared and the lady creeped me out. But I still mimed after that. <laughs> Obviously did not learn my lesson. But yeah, just doing the interior, lots of like pews, kind of like skewers and broken vases, like a little pedestal. I think I changed that pedestal to an actual podium. Yeah, there we go. And some big old tomb looking books to like, you know, symbolise like a Bible or like just a religious text. So yeah, it's kind of fun inside, lots of like antique little bits, uh, making it look run down. Like I say, like everything's been moved around, been a bit out of place. Yeah, but I've noticed they don't tend to really touch on religion in The Sims. They did in The Sims Medieval. You had to choose between like two churches and all that kind of stuff. But they don't in The Sims 4 like at all. Which is really interesting. I guess it's to avoid any like political or <laughs> religious outcry because that kind of stuff can be heated. 
yeah, I think we're nearly done here, just placing little bits and bobs around. We're gonna go into the screenshots in a little minute. And yeah, if you like this build, please give this video a like. And if you want to see any more videos by me, then click that subscribe button. I think I might next time do a renovation of this church, make it like into a modern living space. But yeah, this will be on the gallery and I'll post the link in the description down below. And I will see you all next time.